Good evening, Fernwood. My name's Neil, and thank you for joining me on my quest to watch all 325 episodes of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, one day at a time, in front of you. We are heading into the March 18th, 1976 episode. Mary has been dealing with some direction issues, like direction of her life issues, and Loretta suggested that Mary's thing was communicating. We'll see how she follows up on that. In the Hager's household, since we were talking about Loretta just a second ago, Loretta seems to be on mend from her various ailments, including a spinal injury and a tumor. The tumor mysteriously is in remission. I think that's what was being referred to last episode. But basically, she's on the mend. While Charlie is trying to earn money to pay off their loan bills so they don't get evicted and in the midst of trying to make some raffle sales happen got into a fight with someone at his old work and he's not getting that job back probably I would not expect it George and Martha have a little bit of tension between them but they are not ending their marriage at least the sexual part of their marriage so George is happy about that, but Martha cannot deal with seeing him touch her, so that's something that they will have to put up with. Kathy and Steve. Steve should be on his way back to Fernwood anytime now, and he's been off in New York, and Kathy's afraid that he's seen a world that is beyond her, and she doesn't know what to do with it. So that will set us up for March 18th, 1976 episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Lunch. Except it has to be said by a person who doesn't speak clearly. Mary Hartman, I love you dearly. But I swear to Pete, hun, you hadn't been listening to a cotton picking word I've been saying. No, your mind's a million miles away. Well, to tell you the truth, Loretta, in my heart, I heard everything you've been singing, and it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And my mind, well, it isn't a million miles away, but let's just say it's not in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, I'm glad that your heart liked it, because it is a romantic song, you know. See, it's based on this thing that said, Charlie said to me, oh, I don't know, a while back. He said, it was kissing me at the time, and he said, Loretta, when I'm kissing you like this, I just feel like somebody could stick a needle in my arm and feed me intravenously and I could just go on kissing you forever. <laughs> and if I could just capture that feeling, that notion, that thought, you know, in the song, I've got me a gold record, Mary. I do. You know what I love about you? No, you know what I really love? What? I mean, you just... You give everything you have to your music, don't you? Yeah. See, like me, I don't give my everything to anything. Well, of course you do, Mary, Tom, and Heather. Well, yeah, but, you know, they have their own... I don't know, it's just, uh... It's like we were saying the other day, I mean, there's more. I mean, I just know there must be something more. Mary. Your more is communicating. You mean you really think, you think my thing is communicating? I sure do. Wish that expression weren't my thing, it's my thing, you know? I don't like that. I mean, I, it's, uh, it's my thing. I mean, I understand it. I just, I, I, 
Okay, so just say that's my thing. So now what do I do with it? Well, uh, Mary, I'm real good at spotting things, you know, but I don't know what to do with them after I spot them, you know. <laughs> I know what I could do real big in communication. I mean, the real big thing to do in communication. What? Television. Yeah. You know, I, I, I could be like Barbara Walters or... I mean, I'm not saying I could really be Barbara Walters. I mean, I wouldn't know what to say or anything. But that is a thought, Mary. It is a thought. You know, of course, now you have to know a lot about a lot of things if you're going to do television, you know. Uh, you got to know about history. You know, you got to know about books. You got to know Italian and Jewish jokes and all that stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. Jewish jokes. I, you know what I could do? I could do a talk show where they don't talk about anything like the Dinosaur Show. Great idea. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I've seen it. See the USA in your Chevrolet. No, no, it's not that. See the USA in your Chevrolet. Mwah! The kiss comes after. It's over. Anyway. Diane Short, she doesn't do that anymore. That was when she used to be sponsored by Chevrolet. She's different sponsors now. Um, you know, they're, 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 you have to do with cleaning things. You know, dental, uh, feminine hygiene, deodorant, stuff like that. Different, different sponsors. Well, whatever. You Hi, Mary. I'm home. Hi, Tom. I am. Yeah. Actually, right, I, uh, I went over to your place first. I was looking for you over there. Oh, yeah? What you want with me, Tommy? Well... Actually, I, uh, how do you feel? Just face you fine. What's up? Well, it's about Chuck. Well, what's wrong? I mean, he's all right, isn't he? What's wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's all right. He's fine, he's fine. Tom, why'd you go looking for Loretta if everything's all right with Charlie? Yeah. Well, what I wanted to tell her was that Charlie came by the plant this afternoon, and uh, he was selling some raffle tickets. Well, I, I already know that, Tom. If you have something to say, just say it. I mean, the best way to do it is just say it. I mean, that's how you communicate. You just say it. I believe in that, you know. Well, uh, Tom, is Charlie all right or isn't he? I mean, what's happening? Well, in every important way, he's fine. Tom, in what unimportant way isn't he fine? What the hell are you getting angry at me for, Mary? I mean, Loretta hasn't been well. I'm only trying to be tactful and spare her pain. Now, well, look, Loretta. Charlie got mad when the plant foreman tried to kick him out. What? And so, uh, so Charlie decked him and he got arrested. Char oh, come on, now, wait a no, minute. No, no, there's wait, nothing to worry about, nothing to worry about. I don't understand. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. You see, now, you see, now, that's very bad communication. I mean, Charlie's in jail. That means in jail? Wait, hold on. Is Charlie in jail? George went down to the police station. Wait a minute. Everything's straightened out. George went down to the police station. Why did you go down? You're his best friend. Why did you stop him? Will you stop that? Will you stop it? I have not made any mistakes. You have not made any mistakes. Will you stop it? I have not made any mistakes. Will you stop it? I have not made any mistakes. Will you stop it? I have not made any mistakes. Will you stop it? I have not made any mistakes. Will you stop it? I have not made any mistakes. Will you stop it? I have not made any mistakes. Well, honey, I, it's it's all right, it's all right, honey. A guy got a little cruel, and I just I just had to get physical with him. I just lost my Loretta. Look at you, look at you walking with that cane. Oh, honey, mm, that's a miracle. <laughs> you know the Dickens, though. It, you know it's Heather's uh, walking stick and their stick horse, whatever you call them. <laughs> I drive this van there and go. I'm, I'm better than Charlie Chaplin. Uh, isn't that a miracle? Isn't she a miracle, Tom? Isn't she a miracle, man? She's a damn. Playing miracle, Mary. <laughs> well, honey, I mean, you got put in jail and you got out the same day. I mean, what happened? What's awful, honey? Well, no, it wasn't too bad. I mean, they they dropped the charges because it was the first offense, and then I committed the real offense. <laughs> what was that? I sold the cops two raffle tickets. <laughs> so, you got that dumb form and dropped the charges, huh? Well, it wasn't hard, Tom. I mean, the union didn't want to press the charges. It makes them look bad, you know. Yeah. Coming down on a working man. Especially one who doesn't happen to be working. Sure, sure, sure. They weren't thinking about you. They were just thinking about themselves and how the hell they look. 
I swear to you, I cannot tell the difference between union and management anymore. They're both so busy thinking about how the hell they look to the rest of the world, they don't have any time to think about working conditions, Charlie. Tom, Tom, I appreciate your friendly concern, but I, I don't want you getting riled at union and management over me. It's not just over you, Charlie. I've been bugged for a long time. It's just getting worse. Bugged for a long time. It's just getting worse. Why the hell did you repeat that? Uh, oh, I guess it's just something that's going around. It's just like a restlessness, you know? You know, I'm glad we're talking about this. I mean, this is like communicating. There's that word again. There it is. Oh, well, listen, Aunt Mary and Tom, we're going to go home now. So yes. y'all can talk about this. Yes, you know? why don't we do that? Now, just hang on there. Oh, Charlie, Grab your guitar, honey. Charlie, Grab your guitar. Oh, honey, put me down, really, now. No. Oh, Charlie, damn, but you're cute. <laughs> Swanson's TV dinner. And what the devil you got to pot? Heather's favorite t-shirt. It got some bad stains on it. So I was trying to get them out. You're angry, aren't you? Who the hell said I was angry? I did. Well, I'm not angry, okay? This may come as a surprise for you to be wrong just once, Mary Hart, but I am not angry. I'm just disappointed, that's all. You're disappointed? Yeah, I'm disappointed. You talk about communicating, right? I got a lot of things to talk about, Mary. Things at work. A lot of concerns about just a lot of things to talk about, but you don't seem to be interested in anything. Well, I've got things in my mind, Tom, you know? You got things on your mind. What, what kind of things? You know, you say that, uh, you're incredible. I mean, you say something like that, like I couldn't possibly have anything on my mind. Well, I do, Tom Hartman, and they're important things. Yeah, sure, important things, like all that BS about, about sexual cycles, is that it? Tom, now listen, don't be angry just because your sexual powers are diminishing. Mary. It's only natural for your age, that's all. This is not what I wanted to talk about. Tom, you must have had it in mind somewhere. I mean, it must have been in your head somewhere. I mean, you brought it up. I mean, I'm not upset about it. It's not a problem for me. And you know why? Because I understand now. Mary, I do not want your understanding. <laughs> That's funny. Because the one thing I want in this world is your understanding. What? What do I understand? What? What? You wouldn't understand. Well, I'll tell you one thing I do understand. You, wanna, you know what I understand? You're driving me crazy. That's what I understand. You're simply driving me crazy. <laughs> like 18 again. If only you could take that energy and convert it from anger into something sexual. Oh, I don't see how they can take Charlie to the police station. After all, the man was only trying to sell some raffle tickets in the factory. I don't see how that can interfere with the manufacture of automobiles. There are rules and regulations, Martha. Poor Charlie is in danger of losing his house. How would you feel if you didn't have a house to come home to? I could sit back and enjoy my evening paper in peace. Well, I think that foreman friend of yours was being just a little unreasonable. Martha, in our last contract, the union agreed that if a man is fired or if he leaves his job, which Charlie did, they no longer have visiting privileges. Why do the company and the union worry about things like that when there are so many important things that I hear Tom talking about all the time? Tom, Tom. Now what the hell does that young punk know about unions? Listen, we older guys, we're the ones that gave it to him. 
Where else can he come home with 147.50 with overtime, huh? Nowhere but with the unions. The same union, Martha, that gave us that, that, that garbage disposal. This, this refrigerator, the washing machines, the, the radio, this, this stove. And them. Oh, they did not, George. They come from Sears. Oh, Martha, you know what I'm talking about. These young punks like Tom, they don't appreciate the unions. Well, why should they? We're the ones who spilled our blood and guts so that they can inherit the good stuff. How difficult is it to punch two holes in a dome light every 32 seconds, eight hours a day? Now, is that a hard job? You bet your boots it isn't. But do these young punks appreciate it? No. You know what they want to do? They want to tear the union apart. And then where would they be? George, you're getting red in the face. Well, I'm hot around the collar. Now, that's not good for you. Come on, calm down, sit down. It's bad for your blood pressure, and that's no good for your heart. Now, just calm down. Calm down. Button up your overcoat when the wind is free. Take good care of yourself. You belong to me. Boop, 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 boop. Well, well. I like the affection, but when you sing, your voice could etch glass. Feel better? Yeah, I feel better. Martha, I'm very happy that we got over that little argument last night. You mean about the half-nude girl in a hotel in Milwaukee? Well, no, no, no. I explained all that, <laughs> and you believed me, about 2.15 this morning. You remember? Oh. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> You're going to make me blind. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And... That isn't any good for my blood pressure. <laughs> That's just to punctuate 215 last night. <laughs> oh, you don't. <laughs> don't believe it. You can still get it on, don't you? Oh, hi, Cassie. Oh, oh. Well, we were just going around. I don't want to hear it. I don't even want to think of it. <laughs> Well, that's because you're a child, and children always feel that way about their parents. Just the picture of it, yeah. Well, you just erase that picture, Kathy. You know, your mother and I don't necessarily like the uh, considered yeah. You're right, Daddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm upset. About what? About Steve. A few days ago, he was just a normal, average, Fernwood, Ohio, deaf mute. Now he's getting his poems published in a book, and, and he was on the Johnny Tilson show. He's a celebrity. I'm afraid I'm not good enough for him anymore. Oh, what do you mean, not good enough? Now listen, let me tell you something, sweetheart. You are good enough for the Prince of Wales, honey. You hear me? You are good enough for Al Pacino. You are good enough for any man alive. And I'm sure that, that sweet, open-faced boy of yours will accept that fact. And if he forgets it, I'll punch his heart out. You're doing fine. You're fine. Easy. Careful. <laughs> you tired? Well, I'm just a little wee bit poo, but I'm getting better, Charlie. I'm getting better and better every day. I mean, before you know it, I'm going to be just dancing light as a feather, just like Thumbelina on the floor. I believe you're telling the truth. It's a miracle. It's faith. It's faith that makes miracles. It's true, Charlie. That was a wise observation. Hey, what's wrong? You look a mite bit worried. Oh! No, no, I'm fine. Now, Charlie, you and I have never had a secret from each other, and it's no time to start now. No, of course not. Now, one of the best things about us is our communication. That's why we've got to skyrocket sex and Mary and Tom don't. I mean, we would have skyrocket sex if we didn't even speak the same language. I would find you attractive even if I was wearing earplugs. Well, since our communication is so good, then why don't you communicate to me about what's been bothering you? Well, it's just the money situation is getting me down, is all. I know. Me too. Now, I don't want you to worry about it, honey. Money is a man's job to worry about. Well, 
Surely, though, the Lord is going to provide for us, Charlie. Well, he always has, honey, and I, I'm very grateful about it. I don't want him to think that I'm not appreciative and that I wouldn't do anything that he wants me to do anytime he wants me to do it. Charlie, I know he knows that we're trying. And the Lord helps those who help themselves. Yeah, well, maybe he just thinks I'm not trying hard enough. I mean, I'm not making very much money selling those raffle tickets, and I don't know what else to do. Maybe I could get a job singing more than just two nights a week at Capri Lounge. Well, we could try, but I doubt it. And anyway, I don't know how I feel about having my wife supporting me. That's not the American way. Well, now, Charlie, just be till, you know, we have enough money to make another demonstration record. And, honey, then you're going to be busy being my full-time personal manager. Sweet lover, we better face it. We don't have enough money right now to make another demonstration record. Oh, darn. Friends, we don't have enough money to entertain either. I don't even have any beer left. I gave the last one to Tom. Hi, Charlie. Remember me? I, Clyde Munsey. I was the engineer at the studio when your wife cut that demonstration oh, tape. sure. Yeah, sure. Come on in. Honey, look who's here. Well, howdy, Clyde. How are you? Sit yourself down. Make yourself to home. You know, we'd offer you beer, but we just ran out of the last one today. Oh, that's okay. I can only stay a minute. It is so good to see you, Clyde. I will never forget what a wonderful, fabulous job you did on those tapes you made for us, honey. We appreciate it. Well, thanks. Say, it sure was a darn shame the way that tape got burned up in that car wreck. Yeah, well, that's what happens in life sometimes. What you doing in this neck of the woods, Clyde? Well, I did something that concerns you. Why? Yeah. I was sending some tapes to my brother. He's an A&R man at a record company in Chicago. Yeah? Well, by mistake, I happened to send along an outtake from your taping session. Just the voice track. Oh, well, if it was an outtake, it couldn't have been that good, you know, because it was an outtake. Well, my brother thinks it was good enough to give it a full instrumental backing. What? Are you no, kidding, no, Charlie? No, he thinks it's sensational. He wants to release it as a single. Oh, well, that's okay. okay with you. Okay, okay. That's it. That's the break we've been needing. Oh, Charlie, that is so much more. What? What do you mean? It's a sign, Charlie. The Lord isn't too busy for us. He's taking care of us. A lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. I am confused about the timeline because the day that Charlie punched out Tiny at the plant was the day was the morning that Mary went to see Loretta which Loretta and Mary treated like a whole other day but I'm just gonna forgive it because whatever I don't know that the advice that Loretta is giving Mary about communication being her thing is sound Mary is 50-50 at best when it comes to communicating and Maybe it's just that Loretta likes talking to Mary and that's how she feels, so that's coloring her perception. But also Mary tends to take things fairly literally and and maybe doesn't consider the underneath of them, or at least she doesn't act like she does. Because we know that she thinks a lot and she's in her head pretty much all the time with George and Martha, it's really sweet to see them affectionate. That's actually pretty rare on this show, so I appreciated that. And, you know, I don't really understand all the union stuff other than bosses and union are are bad. So I think that's going to just need to develop a little bit. And, you know, there you go. That is the March 18th, 1976 episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Thank you for coming along, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.